left for me Let me hide myself in thee Let the water and the blood From your wounded side Which mm -hmm. Lord Be of sin the double cure Save from wrath and make me pure Cleanse from guilt and cleanse from sin White as snow Rock of ages cleft for me Let me hide myself in thee Rock of ages cleft for me Let me hide myself in thee Good morning, welcome to our time of prayer together in the morning. Um, this morning, can I ask for your special prayer for Les, who emailed me last night to say that his dad, who'd been ill in hospital with COVID, uh, uh, died uh, uh, because of a lack of oxygen. It was a direct result of the COVID infection. So can we pray for Les? Uh, we'll pray for him later. Uh, we'll continue our journey through the book of Job. So let's take a moment to quieten ourselves as we come to pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. As we look outside at the beauty of the day, let's remember that this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. We've gathered this morning in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, today we may give ourselves in service to God. Let's take a moment to say the morning blessing, and then just to reflect on the fact that this day is a gift from God. So the prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Creator and Redeemer of all, to you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love you fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ our light, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God forever. The night's passed and a new day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Let's turn to God's word. If you would turn with me to the opening chapter of Job. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a message to Job, and said the oxen were ploughing, and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and took them, and struck down your servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another, and said, The fire of God fell from heaven, and burned up the sheep, and the servants, and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was speak yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. 
and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone escaped to tell you. And Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. We seem to think that we have a right to a good life. We seem to think that, especially if we're Christians, we should never accompany or have anything to do with suffering. And that's a very arrogant way to think about life. Life isn't as it should be because the world isn't as it should be because we sinned in the beginning. Now Job isn't aware of anything that's gone on in the courts of heaven. And he's faced with utter suffering, the loss of everything that he would have and claim that he'd earned because of his hard labours. But the amazing thing about the chapter, we, the verses we read this morning, is Job's response. I want you to imagine that you come home from church and find your house has been burnt to the ground and all your possessions have gone. I'm sure, as Job did, you would tear your robe and shave your head. But if you notice, there's a little phrase tucked away in verse 20. Job worshipped. Job didn't reject God. He fell into God's loving arms and sought God. And he acknowledged that we don't have a right to anything. Because he acknowledges in verse 21 that naked we come from our mother's womb and naked we return. The Lord gave and the Lord taken away. Today I take a funeral. And we use those words from Job 1.21 at the start of every funeral service to remind us that what's important to us is that we recognise that what we have is a gift from God. Isn't it amazing that Job, having faced this trial, we end the, verse with the passage with verse 22. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. When he faced trials, he didn't blame God, and he didn't behave as though God didn't exist. What a challenge to us in a time of trial to face this time of testing Without blaming God in the wrong way, we may need to seek what God is doing in this time of suffering. As Job seeks God to find out what God is doing in this time of suffering. And we'll see as we go through the book how Job resolves that. But what a challenge to us we have this morning. In the heat of the pain of grief of suffering. Yes, Job does grieve, which is quite right and proper. But he doesn't sin, he worships, and he comes before God humbly. What a challenge to us in this time of testing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You've died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Today, as you go about your business, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. In the light of what we've just read from Job, it seems appropriate to read the Benedictus, or part of the Benedictus this morning. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham 
to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our lives. We're going to turn to prayer in a moment, but before we do that, we're going to pray together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you for Job. It is a precious book. We thank you for the lesson we learned this morning, that we have no right to feel we should be exempt from suffering. Lord, we do not understand why suffering comes to us, as Job didn't understand. Job wasn't party to any of the discussions in heaven. But we pray, we beg you, Lord, that you would give us the faith to respond when we are tested as Job responded. Yes, to grieve from our hearts, but to worship and not to sin. To recognise that, Lord, we come into the world with nothing and we leave the world with nothing. Father, unlike Job, we have Jesus Christ, the promise and hope of eternal life. Job is a metaphor for Jesus, losing everything, but there might be hope in the end. And we pray for Les this morning. We pray for Joe, for Chris, for Gwyneth, for Rose and Oliver, as they mourn the loss of a much-loved father, grandfather and great-grandfather. Father, we thank you that infections seem to be falling. Death rates are definitely falling. We cry out to you, Lord, have mercy. Show us your face and help us to understand why this time of testing has fallen upon our nation. We thank you, Lord, that it has brought about a revival in those seeking you. And Father, we give our day to you. We pray for Norman, who will bury his mum, Kay, at 11.45. We thank you for Kay's faith, commitment and trust in her Lord. We pray, Lord, for you to be with us in the day. Give us peace beyond all understanding. And so, Father, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the family of God, let's say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Don't forget that we uh, will do the next bit of Job tomorrow and uh, there's Compline this evening. Please don't forget there is also a prayer meeting on Wednesday and a quiz on Thursday. Have a great day. I'm off to celebrate Grace's 12th birthday uh, on Zoom which will be quite a challenge. But have a good day and let's praise God for the book of Job.
Thank you.